We are recording. Okay, we're gonna start in just a few minutes. So we'll have a little dead time, I guess. Okay, we'll start in one minute. And Caesar, no mangroves. Sorry, we can do mangoes, but no mangroves. You're in the wrong webinar. Okay, everybody, I'm gonna go ahead and start. Thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, today, we're gonna to talk about tropical, propagating tropical fruit using air layers. Now I say tropical fruit, but this will work on many different uh, types of crops. It doesn't have to be tropical fruit. So you can use this as a very good uh, propagation technique. Now I am Jeff Wasileski. I'm the commercial tropical fruit extension agent for Miami-Dade County and University of Florida IFAS. Uh, if you're a commercial grower in Miami-Dade County, my whole job is to help you. So get in touch with me. I'll have my contact information at the end. And if you did not get an email from me about this class, please email me to get on my email list. Otherwise, you might not find out about classes or other information in the future. So let's go ahead and get started. Please, everybody, make sure that you stay on mute. So that way um, we don't get interrupted. Okay, so welcome to the first edition of Tropical Fruit Tuesdays. Uh, today we're gonna talk about air layering. Like I said, we have some upcoming classes. This is probably gonna be every other Tuesday until I run out of information, which will probably be, uh, I give myself three months before I'm out. Um, so we're gonna talk about pruning young trees, June 23rd, propagation by grafting, July 7th, proper planting, July 21st, and the mango, August 4th. And we'll keep going from there. And I'll send out the information on how to register for that. 
um, probably shortly after this for the first one, pruning young trees. Probably that will come out tomorrow. Okay, so information, where do you get it? Um, I have an EDIS. EDIS is the University of Florida database, and I have one on tropical and subtropical fruit propagation. So it has everything we're gonna talk about today in that, so you can just Google EDIS space tropical fruit propagation, and you'll probably find that uh, that's what it looks like there on the left of the screen. Where else can you get information besides University of Florida? Other universities is a good place. Uh, YouTube is actually a pretty good place to find information. Um, my girlfriend, her sink broke in her kitchen. So she asked me if I could fix it. I was like, sure, no problem. I can do that real easy. So I just went to YouTube and figured out how to do it. I had no idea how to do it, but it got fixed. Uh, also, Master Gardeners. You go? What's that? Okay. Um, Master Gardeners is another good place to get information. I know some of you listening today are Master Gardeners. Uh, and then, as far as information, beware the source. YouTube is a good place to get information, but not everything you see there is going to be correct because you can just put it up. So be careful if you're getting something from social media, be real careful about that. Okay, now I'm done preaching. Let's talk about propagation. Why do we propagate? Well, one reason is to make more. You have, you have a tree that you want to make more of, so you can do that by propagation. Uh, how else, why else do we propagate? To maintain a cultivar. What does that mean? Let's say you have a mango tree. It's a Cary mango tree, or you have a Glen mango tree, or you have an Edward mango tree, or you have a Kit mango tree. If you plant the seed from one of those mango trees, the tree that comes out is not going to be a Kit, a Cary, a Glen, or an Edward. It's going to be whatever that mother tree was, the kit mixed with whatever pollinated it. So that seedling is gonna be something else. So if you want a kit or a carry, you have to propagate it using asexual propagation, which is one of the techniques, or which air layering is an asexual type of propagation. Okay, another reason you might propagate is to get ahead of a disease. If I have a very important uh, avocado tree, and it gets laurel wilt, I could take a piece of that and graft it and save it from dying on the new plant, on the propagated plant before the mother tree passes away. Okay, what's another good reason for profit? We have lots of commercial nurseries in South Florida and they're all propagating their own plants or many of them are, and that's how they make their money. Okay, we're gonna split propagation into two types, sexual and asexual. This is pretty easy because sexual is by seed. So when we talked about that carry mango and we plant the seed, it's not gonna be a carry mango because that's sexual propagation. Uh, asexual, or there are many different types which we'll talk about. Air layering is one of those asexual types of propagation. Okay, so here are the types, cuttings, which we'll have a, a class on that in the future, air layers or marcots, which we're gonna talk about today. Division, division is, let's say you have a banana, a clump of bananas and you separate them. That's a type of propagation and that's asexual because they'll be exactly the same as the mother plant. Grafting, another type of asexual propagation, which we'll talk about in the future, and tissue culture. Okay, so we have a quick poll. I don't know if I can pull that up, so I'm gonna ask Anna if she can do that. It's the first one, yes, okay. So guys, if you could just click on the answer, asexual propagation is, is it fast? Is it clonal? Is it mostly used with dicots? Is it all of the above? And then we'll have the same question at the end to see your learning gains. Not everybody has to participate here. We'll just give you a little time.
So all of the above is in the lead. Colonial's coming up strong. Okay, and I think we can stop it there. So for those of you that said, oh wait, I can share the results. So you guys should be able to see that. So for those of you that said all of the above, you are correct. Let's say in the future we have the same question. You might wanna answer all of the above. Okay. And here we go, here are the answers. So asexual characteristics. We talked about all the different types of asexual propagation. These are some of the characteristics. It's fast. What does that mean? Well, today you're gonna to see how quickly we can create an entire plant using um, air layering. So it can be very fast. If you grow something from seed, let's say you plant that carry mango seed and you grow that, it could take you 10 to 15 years before that tree is ready to produce flowers and fruit. That's because it has to go through all the stages of sexual maturity. Okay, when you do something asexually, that piece of that plant that you're propagating, it's already sexually mature. So it can produce fruit almost immediately as soon as it's big enough. So that's a key good characteristic of asexual propagation. It's sometimes easy and sometimes it's not. The one we're gonna talk about today is very easy. Sometimes when I teach this class and we actually go out in the field and do air layers, I get 100% of the people that do the air layers, they all, all the air layers come out and work. Uh, so it's that, it can be that easy. Sometimes it's not, grafting is not easy. Uh, it's clonal, so we talked about that, meaning if I take a piece if I do an air layer on a lychee tree, it's a Mauritius lychee, and I do an air layer on that, when I plant that air layer, it's still a Mauritius lychee. It's a clone of the parent. Uh, and mostly you're gonna use this on dicots. It won't work on monocots. Monocots are like palms, bananas, things like that. Only division will work with bananas and We'll, we'll talk about why this works mostly with dicot. So I'm going to show you why. Okay. All right, so here's some more of the asexual types, air layers, cuttings, division, grafting, tissue culture. So air layers, the one we're going to talk about today for tropical fruit, it's really best for lychee, longan, and guava. If you look under grafting, you have mango, avocado, sapodilla, carambola, jackfruit, canistel, and many others. You're typically going to do those using grafting and not air layering. Why? Because grafting, you have a much stronger root system. So lychee, longan, guava, air layers. You can do that on a lot of ornamentals. You can do air layers. So this is still going to be a good technique for you to have. Cuttings, mostly spontaneous for cuttings for tropical fruit, division, bananas, and pineapple. Pineapples are a bromeliad, you can divide those. We talked about grafting and tissue culture. A lot of people use um, tissue culture to propagate bananas to get rid of disease. Okay, general air layering information. We've talked a lot about asexual propagation. Now we're gonna drill down into actual air layering. Uh, it's fairly easy, like I talked about. And in this picture, you have a couple breadfruit trees that are being air layered in a nursery. Um, when you do air layering, and I'm going to show you uh, how to do that through pictures. And then I actually, I have some stuff here that I'm going to do some air layering right here in front of you if that works out for us. And when you do it, you go to a tree that you're gonna air layer and you look for a healthy upright branch. You usually wanna get a branch that's been growing, that's not been there a long time. It's not an old branch, it's a younger, more tender branch. Um, 
Usually you do it in the warm months. So now is a great time to do air layering as well as cuttings, as well as grafting. <clears throat> what will you need to do air layering? You need a knife, a pretty dull knife. You don't need a sharp knife. You need some uh, sphagnum moss, which I have here. Sphagnum moss, which is moist. And you need tin foil about this size that I have here. Uh, and then of course you need the mother plant. Uh, when you do air layer, you're going to remove a complete plant. You see those, these three uh, air layers here? When this roots, you're going to cut right here, and then this is going to be already a complete plant. It has your leaves, it has your roots, it's ready to go. So that's a real good thing about air layers. Oxins are usually not necessary. When I do the class on cuttings, we'll talk about oxins. Oxins are man-made hormones that you would use to force rooting. But for air layering, it's usually not necessary. Certainly you can use them. It might help your propagation rate, but I don't think it's necessary. And once you do the air layer on the tree, it usually takes five weeks or more for it to get the roots. Okay, why does air layering work? We talked about monocots and dicots. This is a dicot, which all, almost all the tropical fruit are dicots. And this is what it looks like in between, on the, or inside. On the left here, this is, we're looking at it from above if we cut off a die cut. So imagine this is a mango tree and we just chopped it. Here's what we would have. On the outside, we have the bark and the phloem. Usually this is called the same thing, the phloem. On the inside, we have the xylem or the wood. And then in between that, we have a thin layer of cells called the cambium. All right, so this red part, the xylem, water and nutrients from the roots go up to the leaves in that, in the xylem. Out here in the phloem, um, things go down the tree from the leaves, energy packets go down from the tree to the roots in the phloem. So if we look over here to the right, the red is the xylem, uh, the blue and the yellow are the phloem and the bark, so things are going down there. Here, xylem, things are going up. So if we remove the phloem, like we have in this picture, and we scrape away the cambium, now the cambium makes more phloem and more xylem. So we don't want to leave that cambium because it will repair the phloem, and we don't want that. So we remove the phloem here and here. We wrap this up in sphagnum moss. We cover it with tinfoil, which I'll show you pictures, so don't worry if you can't visualize it now. But because we interrupt that flow, things are still going down from the top of the plant. And they have hormones associated with them that are telling the plant, when you get to where you're going, make roots. So this should go all the way down to the roots, but it doesn't because we interrupted it. So these cells here have the ability to change from stem cells to root cells. So that's what they do, and they become roots right here. So that's why air layering works, because we trick the plant to making roots where we want the roots to be. Okay, so here is a tree. This is actually a croton. I like to use crotons a lot for my uh, demonstrations for propagation, because they work really, really well. And the bark, the phloem usually comes off really easy on crotons. So I actually brought some crotons here that we're gonna propagate at the end. Okay, so what do you do? You take your knife, you find your strong upright branch. It's gonna be about the size of a pencil, maybe a little bit bigger. And you take your knife and you score all the way around the branch. You press down until you feel the wood, the xylem. You don't saw at it, you just press down. Then you make a ring all the way around. Then you go down about an inch and a half. You do the exact same thing. You make a ring all the way around. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna draw a line from one ring to the second, pushing down, scoring down. Because what I'm trying to do is remove this flow. Okay, and I'm keeping my eyes on the chat if anybody has questions. I'm keeping my eyes on that for you. Okay, so there's the line I drew all the way down. And then I take my knife 
and I pop it in between there and I peel off the phloem. So the phloem is off. We're looking at xylem here. And in between those two, we can't see it, but there's cambium. So we're gonna to wanna to remove that as well by scraping it with a knife real gently. Okay, so here I am peeling it off. Now, if you're doing this in the summer months and you're doing it with a, a, a relatively new branch, it'll peel off real nice like this. If you have an older branch, um, you're going to have a little trouble sometimes getting off the phloem. It won't come off real easy and beautiful like this. Okay, one, oh, so we peel this all the way off. We get it all the way off, and then we're going to take our knife and gently scrape here. Gently going to scrape there. And one thing I forgot to mention is this time here where you're, here where you're making your, your scores, you see how there are no leaves here? That's because I removed them. So if you have leaves in the way, you can just remove them. So you have a nice open area to work. Okay, so then we take our sphagnum moss. I usually take about a handful. The sphagnum moss has been soaked in water, but then squeezed out. So it's moist, but it's not wet. It's very important that it's not wet because that will rot your, your plant. Okay, then I take the sphagnum, excuse me, and I wrap it around the exposed area. You see here, we have the xylem, we have the phloem is removed. I've scraped away the cambium so that phloem is not going to regrow. I wrap the sphagnum around and then I take my tin foil and I tightly wrap that sphagnum should be very tight. So there it is at the bottom. I'm wrapping that up. Now I say tin foil, and you can buy tin foil that's already cut to the right size, um, but you could also use plastic, like um, just clear see-through plastic. The problem with that is you're going to have to cut it to size, and it doesn't stay on like this. With the tin foil, the tin foil itself holds to the plant. If you use plastic, you're going to have to tie it on. The one benefit of using a clear plastic is you can see when there are roots. Okay, so then we tie up the bottom, we tighten up the top, and that is the air layer. Now we can just let that sit for a good five weeks. Here I did two, and what I'm gonna do in about four to five weeks, I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna pinch this and feel if it's firm or soft. If it's very soft, the roots have probably not started yet. If it's, if it's um, pretty firm, I might peel back the tin foil a little bit, take a peek and see if it's ready. Okay, I have a couple questions, so I'm gonna look at those. Jessica says, what is the texture like once xylem is exposed? Um, is there a list of all types of plants that can be propagated? Can I propagate trees if they're still in planters? So the texture once xylem is exposed, it's, it's, um, it's slippery. The cambium is slippery. Uh, is there a list? And that edis in the back of the edis, I have a list of tropical fruit that you can propagate. Um, you can probably find a list online of different things and how you can propagate them, I'm sure. Uh, can I propagate trees if they're still in planters? Yes. Sam asks, are there alternatives to sphagnum moss? So yes, Sam, core is a good one that you can use. Uh, Jorge says, well, Jorge's answering part of the question. Thank you, Jorge. Okay, back to the lecture. Okay, here's what it will look like. Look at that. So we peel back the tinfoil and we have roots. The sphagnum has dried out, we have roots. This has been cut off the tree. You see here it was cut off the tree. So now this, and here's one that's even better rooted see a really good root system here. Now when I put this into a container, I, um, I am not going to want to break up these roots. Usually if you have a one gallon container, you're going to plant it in the ground and the roots look like this, you want to break it up. But you don't want to do that with an air layer because these are very sensitively attached and they can just break apart. So you don't want to do that. What you do want to do is put it right into a container. This is a one gallon container. You see the soil there, it's got some perlite, so it's, it's well draining. And 
Dayana, how long does it take for the roots to grow? About five weeks. Uh, thank you again, Jorge. I should have looked. Jorge answered that. Okay, so then you, you add soil here, you push it down so it's nice and firm, and voila, we have a propagated croton. We have a plant already. It has roots. It has a top. It's ready to go. We would allow those roots to fill that container before we plant it into the ground. And we have a, a, a plant already ready to go. Now I picked croton because crotons, there's many different types of crotons. That's one you're looking at here. Here's another one here. You see it's very different. So how do I get that exact same croton? I have to propagate it uh, asexually. And that's what we did with air layering. So it's exactly, it's a clone of the parent plant. Jessica is asking, can I propagate the same branch in multiple sections? Remember, you're going to cut it off. So I wouldn't use the same branch. I would use separate branches. Okay, so poll question. Anna, if you could pop that up again. This is going to be look very similar. I want 100% of you guys to get this correct. Asexual propagation is... Is it clonal? Is it fast? Is it usually with die cuts? Is it all of the above? Okay, we have 43 of our people have already answered. I'll wait just a few seconds more. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll. So, share results. So you see, you guys did really well. It is all of the above. It can be fast, it's definitely fast. It's usually done with dicots. We talked about that. And it's clonal. Those of you that just answered clonal, I don't uh, feel bad because I did say clonal a bunch of times. So that's probably why. Okay. Okay. So general air laying information. Remember, it's fairly easy. We've seen that. You're going to select healthy upright branches. It's usually done in the warm months. You're gonna remove a complete plant and auxins are usually not necessary and it takes five weeks or more. Um, Melissa says, in terms of timing, is it better to air layer earlier in the spring when things are just starting to push new growth or later in the summer when it's humid? I think either one will work. Um, I think if you're gonna choose between the two, I would probably start in late May. Okay, here is my contact information. My email is sflhort at ufl.edu. I'll let you take a look at that. And before I finish, I'm going to actually try to do an air layer on screen for you and see if that works. Okay, so do you guys see me in the big screen? Yeah, Jeff. Yes, okay, good. All right, so here I have um, a croton. Now remember, this will be attached to a plant. So this will be attached to a plant. This is not gonna be loose like this. This is actually a cutting. This will grow from cuttings. But we're going to pretend like it's attached to a plant. So I have the croton here. There you see the trunk. It's about the size of a pencil. I have sphagnum moss, which is moist but not wet. I have tin foil. And somewhere I have a knife. Here's the knife. Okay, so. 
Remember, the first thing I want to do is score this all the way around into the phloem and touching the xylem, but not really cutting into it. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm scoring this all the way around. This is actually easier if it's connected to a plant. Okay, so now here's my first score. So I'm going to go down about an inch and a half here to an inch. Score it again like that. Someone asked, what are auxins? Auxins are uh, hormones that tell a plant to, to root. And they're man-made auxins that you can use to, it's like a powder and you stick, stick a cutting in the powder and that causes it to root. So that's a real simple answer of what auxins are. Okay, so I made a score here and I made a score here. Now I'm gonna draw a line from one to the next like that. And then if this is ready to go, it'll peel away real easily. So I'm going to stick my knife in that line from the top to the bottom and sort of help it to peel away. See, it's peeling pretty nice. And if it's really being cooperative, it'll come off by hand. I won't need to use the knife. So it's coming off pretty nicely there. It's a little in the back still. Coming off a little bit left. Okay, so now I've exposed the, you can see the xylem. I took off the phloem. But remember what's here, there's cambium here. The cambium will actually regrow the, the phloem. So I'm just gonna gently scratch like this to remove the cambium, just real gentle. We don't wanna be rough. And when I press down to make that score, I didn't do it hard because if I did, I can damage the xylem. Now remember, this is gonna be attached to the tree. So things from the xylem are still going up, roots are, um, water from the, the roots are still going up to the top of the tree. That's what makes this a very viable thing, a very viable type of propagation. Okay, now I'm going to take some sphagnum and tinfoil. Okay, so here's my sphagnum. I got about a handful. I'm going to get my little delicate keyboard out of the way here because I'm making a mess. So I take that and I give it a little squeeze, get some of the water out. And now what I like to do is I pull it apart a little bit because where I pull it apart in the middle, that's where I'm gonna stick the middle, just like that. So now I have it wrapped all the way around the plant. Remember, this would still be attached to a tree. So the last step here is I take my tin foil, Wrap it around, and I wrap the bottom tight to the top, nice and tight. And there is the air layer. Okay, so now I would leave that on the tree for about five weeks. I come, I give it a little pinch. If it's still soft, it probably hasn't made roots yet. If it's firm, I would take a peek. If it's got roots, I cut it off the plant and it's ready to put into a container. Okay, so let me look at the questions. Thank you, Anna, for putting in the link. There's my email, thank you, Anna, again. Uh, will you have a link for this recording? Yes, I will, Amy. Uh, Anna answered that, thank you. Frederick, I answered your question, Sandra. Where can I purchase sphagnum moss locally? If you just want a very small amount, they'll have it at a big box store, like a Home Depot or a Lowe's. If you need a great quantity, um, somewhere like hmm, Diamond 
fertilizer will have it. Lowe's orchid supplies, Donna says, which is correct. Organic oxens, Jessica, I don't know that. Melissa, when adding the sphagnum, do you add it above where your cut is at some certain amount? Yes, it's going to be above and below the cut. And then you put the, the tinfoil on there. Okay, Jorge, good point. Aftercare tips, sun watering location, etc. So aftercare, meaning once you put it in the container and you, you've taken it off the tree, you put it in the container, what do you do next? Okay, so watering, you're gonna to wanna to check the water every day. If the container is completely dry, water it. If the container is a little wet, do not water it. Do you put it in the full sun? Do you put it in the full shade? You should probably put it in a little bit of sunlight, like a dappled sunlight. So under an oak tree or something like that would be best. Um, watering location, okay, so I think we covered that. And Caesar is asking, would you propagate edible yucca this way? Um, I think yucca you can propagate by root, by the roots. If you divide the roots, you can propagate yucca that way, I believe. I'm not 100% sure about that. Uh, Frederick is asking about birds picking off the tin foil. Perhaps, Frederick, if you use clear plastic instead of tin foil, that would work because they're probably going to the tin foil because it's shiny. Um, I've been attracted to shiny things my whole life, so that's probably why. Okay, so Jessica says, I don't think birds like shiny, so I don't know. Maybe it's the reflection, they're seeing themselves. I'm not sure about that, but I'm not a bird expert, but I play one on TV. Okay, so I think we're gonna wrap this up. So if you guys have any more questions, go ahead and ask those. Otherwise, I thank you so much for, <laughs> uh, Jorge is saying good joke, wrap it up. So that's it. All right, everybody's saying thank you. So thank you guys so much. One question there is why tinfoil? Tinfoil because it holds in place and it keeps the moisture in. So thank you guys so much. And we'll do this again in two Tuesdays from now. All right? Thank you. And Anna, thank you so much for your help. Eric, can other material be used? Yes, you can use plastic, clear plastic. You can use anything that will hold on and keep the moisture in. Okay, thank you guys.